Hey there, Drew here, and welcome back to the Drew Sauer Coaching Channel. If this is your first time here, thanks for joining us. This channel is for those of us who want to have stellar careers with a little less stress, and if we can, a bit more fun. My job is to bring you ideas that will help you look at your career in a new way. I promise that if you try them out, you'll start to see the professional world differently, and more importantly, they'll start to see you differently. So this video is part of my series on strategic thinking and prioritization. Because there are a million things you could do at any one time, so the question we're trying to answer is, where do I go first? And the topic I want to talk about is mistakes. And so if you ask most people, what do you do about mistakes? The basic answer is typically, don't make them, right? Avoid mistakes. But what I want to talk about today is why that's a trap. Because first of all, perfection is impossible. There will always be mistakes. So if your goal is to not ever make a mistake, you're gonna fail. But counterintuitively, mistakes can actually be a very good thing for your career. And so I'll start with a story, and it's about Marriott, the hotel chain. And most people know what Marriott is, very famous, very customer service oriented. And what they found a number of years ago is that when they looked at their, cl their client surveys, the feedback from their guests, they noticed an interesting pattern. When the stage went perfectly, they got pretty good ratings but not perfect ratings. They got four out of five, you know, decent ratings, but not what they were really looking for. When they looked at the five out of five ratings, they had one thing in common, and that was something went wrong, which is a slightly counterintuitive idea. So what made those the five out of five? It was because of the response, because the room was dirty. They go downstairs. Well, here, let me give you a sweet upgrade. Your dinner's late. Oh, here, let me give you a free soup while you wait. Right? It was the recovery that really made the difference and really made the impression on the guests. To the extent that they actually decided to invest their time not in preventing mistakes, although they do want to have high quality, they actually wanted to invest even more time in what they called customer service recovery. So they have customer service recovery programs, they have trainings, and it's all about when something goes wrong, what do they do to make the stay and the impression on their guests that will get them that five out of five. And in there is the lesson. So that's what we're going to talk about today is why do people remember things and how do you make a good impression? So the first thing to realize is most things do not make an impression, right? Most of life is repetitive. Our brains are great filtering machines, right? There's so much information coming at us. Only things that are deemed important will stick. And so if you think about meetings you had, a me you know, what was your meeting like, you know, two months ago at two o'clock? Who knows, right? Probably don't even remember what it was, right? However, if the power went out and you had to evacuate the building or something weird happened, chances are you're gonna remember the meeting. So that's point number one. For there to be a memory, for there to be a impact, which implies you know, reputation and all that kind of stuff, there needs to be a trigger. If there is no trigger, if everything's just going along the way it is, most people will not remember. So you need a trigger. What's a great trigger? A mistake right? Mistakes are an opportunity to make an impression. And if you take the Marriott example, what do you need to do? You need to recover well, right? So rather than trying to avoid mistakes, right? You've got a big presentation, you've got a big, big meeting, this idea of, okay, I can't make any mistakes. I have to go over this presentation a hundred times. I have to make sure that there are no mistakes. I would suggest that's not the best plan. Yes, you should know your material. Yes, you should practice, but you should expect the mistakes. And what you should practice is the recovery, right? So if you're standing in front of a large group of people and you trip on stage, what do you do, right? A lot of people would get very nervous. They don't, oh no, I look like an idiot. Or you get up and you say, man, I, sh I should have had a second cup of coffee today, right? You make a joke and you move on. But that's what you should think about. Build in your own recovery system, right? Plan this out before you need it. So what happens if you don't do that? Well, if you don't do that, then when the mistake happens, you're gonna fumble it. And people, again, remember the trigger is the mistake, and what they're paying attention to is what happens next. And if you recover poorly, that's what they're gonna remember. They're gonna remember, okay, there's a mistake, and they handled it poorly, and now I have an impression that you can't handle a mistake. If there's a mistake, and you recovered well, you were funny, you were confident, you just went on, and you had a really great answer, wow. Something happened, and all I remember is that, they did, that the individual did a great job recovering, and that's what you want them to think about you. 
So that's why you need to do it. So what's the exercise? Take an upcoming thing. Think of the two, three, four mistakes that you were afraid of making, right? Bumbling a Q&A, again, stuttering in front of people, whatever the case may be, think of the two or three mistakes that you are most afraid of making and plan how you're gonna recover. Expect it to happen and plan how you're gonna recover. I promise that if you try that, you'll feel much more confident, you'll feel much smoother in the moment, and when it happens, you will make a much better impression and people will remember how well you recovered, which will set you up for success going forward. So try it out, let me know in the comments how it goes. And as always, when you're trying to make a significant change, it helps to have a partner. So you can rope in a friend, you can hire a coach. And if you have any interest in working with me, feel free to go to drewsour.com and schedule some time for us to chat. I look forward to seeing you next time.